Fresh out of the reactor is MSD's Atomic 2. It's been completely updated and revamped with all the latest features. Today we'll be installing MSD's Atomic 2 onto our 77 Bronco. We'll be installing the master kit which includes the fuel system. For our installation we'll be installing the Atomic 2 without timing control. Although not required, timing control adds additional benefits. For now you can take a look at the user manual for all the timing control requirements. Here's everything we're going to cover. Before we get started, keep in mind that having a successful install starts with a solid engine foundation. If your engine is worn out, has dead cylinders, burns oil, an EFI system like our Atomic 2 is going to amplify these deficiencies and ultimately cause you headaches when you can't get the engine to run properly. Our Bronco has a solid engine with good compression. So in short, make sure you have a mechanically sound engine before installing any EFI system. Let's take a closer look at what comes with the kit. A quick start manual with detailed instructions that'll guide you step by step through the install. Make sure to read this. The Atomic 2 throttle body, which is good for 650 naturally aspirated horsepower. A new three and a half inch full color touchscreen makes it easy to navigate the startup wizard and monitor engine parameters. Our main power harness plugs directly into our Atomic 2 and contains the four wires that are necessary to get you up and running. The built-in 40 amp fuel pump relay will make short work of our fuel system install. A 10 pin input output harness used to control the programmable inputs as well as a CDI box. A coolant temp sensor provides the ECU with the engine's operating temperatures. The OEM grade Bosch oxygen sensor allows your Atomic 2 to learn as you drive. Also included is a no-weld O2 flange with stainless steel clamps, making the install super easy. Both a carburetor gasket and an air filter gasket. Our master kit means our fuel system is included. 20 feet of Earl's vapor guard fuel hose and all the necessary fittings. An OEM grade 255 liter per hour inline fuel pump. Well, a Holley's fuel pressure regulator keeps our pressure set at 58 PSI. Pre and post filters are included. And finally, all the necessary hardware and bulkhead fittings to return fuel into the tank. Before we get started, let's first remove the negative battery terminal since we'll be dealing with the electrical system. Let's start by removing the carburetor, but first let's label all the vacuum lines. On our Bronco, we have the PCV valve and brake booster hooked up. Let's mark them. We'll also go ahead and disconnect our fuel line. Make sure to have a rag handy to catch any excess fuel before you remove it. Pop off the throttle linkage and throttle return springs. Remove all four nuts from the carburetor. With our carburetor now removed, now's a good time to swap over any studs, transmission brackets over the Atomic 2. As far as our vacuum connections go, the Atomic 2 has three ports at its base plate. Two of them are manifold vacuum and one of them is ported vacuum for your distributor's vacuum advance. We'll install a couple of brass fittings to connect our lines. There's an EFI accessory kit that has a lot of the common parts you'll need to complete your install. We also have throttle and transmission cable brackets available for most popular applications. We were able to mount our return spring bracket onto the throttle stud. Holly offers a compatible throttle cable bracket for use with the Atomic 2. Make sure to install a return spring on your throttle lever. Now that we swapped over our throttle stud and added the vacuum ports, we're ready to install the Atomic 2 throttle body. Since we're running a 1 inch phenolic spacer, we'll go ahead and add a fresh gasket on the bottom side too so our Atomic 2 has a good seal. Make sure not to pinch any wires when installing the throttle body. We reattached our throttle bracket, which I painted black, and bolted the Atomic 2 into place. We then snapped our throttle return springs and throttle cable into position. Double check to make sure there's no binding on the throttle linkage. We then installed the brake booster and PCV hose. Next up is our coolant temperature sensor. Ideally it should be placed near the front of the cylinder head water jacket. An even better option would be the coolant crossover on wet style manifolds 
or before the thermostat on dry manifolds. Since we previously installed one when we did our Holly standalone Pro Dash installation, we're simply going to swap connectors so we'll disconnect the Pro Dash connector and swap it for the Atomic 2 connector. We'll use the CAN bus on the Atomic 2 to get our data into the Pro Dash now. Before we start, I'm going to go over the most common problems encountered with wiring. It all starts with a good crimp or soldered connection. These are the only acceptable wiring methods. Your garden variety crimpers just ain't going to cut it. Loose or improper connections results in excessive resistance. Resistance causes heat that can burn up fuel pumps, wiring, and relays. You need some quality crimpers like MSD's Pro Crimp Tool. It features interchangeable jaws that allows for various styles of crimps all with one tool. This one tool will pay for itself in the long run. With the amp lug jaws and some quality terminals, you'll be able to tackle most any automotive job. Proper grounding starts with your negative battery to the engine block, the engine block to the frame. Another common issue is using painted sheet metal as a grounding point. Make sure to take an abrasive wheel or wire brush and knock off any paint, rust, or contaminants. You should be on bare metal. When extending wires, be sure to match the gauge of the wire you're extending. If you're going to add substantially more length to a wire, make sure to go up a gauge and wire size. Let's get on with our Atomic 2 wiring. With only four wires to connect, this will be pretty straightforward. Let's start with the battery wires, the heavy red and black. Remember, these wires go directly to the battery, nowhere else but the battery. Use a good solid crimper along with some quality terminals for these connections. We're using heat shrink style terminals since they make a weather tight seal and protect from corrosion. We'll go ahead and connect our red wire to the battery but hold off on the black negative wire until we're done with the wiring. Next up is our switch 12 volt pink wire. We need to find a dedicated 12 volt ignition source for our pink wire. The best place is going to be our ignition switch. We need to be sure that this switch 12 volt source has power while cranking the engine over. As another option, you can find a 12 volt switch source on the fuse box by using a test light. Test this by cycling the ignition switch between off and run positions. It's important to note that this wire must have power while cranking your engine over. We used a fuse tap from our local auto parts store to make a clean fused connection. Now that we got our pink switch 12 volt wire hooked up, it's time to move on our ignition wire. Now we got a few options. If you're running a stock mechanical advanced distributor with an inductive ignition coil, you're simply going to connect the yellow wire from the seven pin harness onto the negative terminal of your coil. If you're running an HEI style distributor, you're going to connect the yellow wire to the TAC terminal on the side of the distributor. Since our Bronco has an MSD box, we will not be using the yellow wire. Our kit includes this purple wire harness that plugs into the crank signal connector on the 7 pin harness. The purple wire is then connected to the tech output wire on the MSD ignition. If your MSD ignition or ready to run distributor has a rev limiter verification feature enabled, you will have to disable it as it may activate the injectors causing a flooding situation. Follow these easy steps on how to do that. Our Atomic 2 has two ground inputs and three ground outputs, which allows us to connect things such as electric fans. The light blue wire is a ground triggered wire pre-configured for an electric fan. Since I'm using an MSD solid state relay block to turn the fan on, I'm simply going to connect the light blue wire into the ground trigger channel for our fan. The blue wire is for our fuel pump, which has a 40 amp relay built into it to directly power our fuel pump. We'll run this wire all the way back to our fuel pump. Our Atomic 2 ships with an OEM grade Bosch O2 sensor. It needs to be mounted as close as possible to the engine after the cylinders have merged. This holds true if you've got exhaust manifolds or headers. Our Bronco has long tube headers so we'll mount our O2 sensor right after the collector. You need to be sure you have at least 18 inches of exhaust after you mount the O2 sensor. Our Atomic 2 kit includes a stainless steel clamp on O2 bung with a high temp gasket to seal it all up. Our O2 sensor needs to be mounted between 10 and 45 degrees upward from horizontal. We found a suitable location to mount our O2 sensor just a few inches past our collector. We used a 3 quarter inch step bit to make our hole. Don't forget to position the gasket under the stainless steel bung while slowly tightening down the clamps. You can then install the wideband O2 sensor. Make sure to secure the harness to prevent contact with moving parts and high heat areas.
Our master kits take the guesswork out of choosing a fuel system. Every component you need to build your fuel system is in the box, including the high pressure fuel hose required for our Atomic 2. Do not attempt to use low pressure carb fuel hose for your install. Holly ZFI fuel system kit part number 526-7 includes 40 feet of Earl's Vapor Guard fuel line, more than enough for a supply and return line. There's also a 20 foot kit if you already have a return line. Our Atomic 2 requires an external fuel pressure regulator, so we'll be installing a bypass style fuel system, which requires a return line back to the tank. Our low pressure carburetor fuel pump and fuel line will be coming out. You can repurpose your existing low pressure fuel line for the return line, but if it's seen the light of day like ours has, now's the time to replace it. If you're not using one of our master kits, make sure to take into account your supply and return line fuel sizes. It's important to match the fuel line size to the flow rate of your fuel pump so as not to restrict flow. A good rule of thumb is to match the fuel line size to the outlet size of your fuel pump. In our case, the 3 8 fuel line matches the outlet size of our external pump. Fuel pressure should never dip below 58 PSI and your return line pressure should ideally be zero. If your return line pressure is 4 to 5 PSI or higher, there is a restriction somewhere that must be corrected before proceeding. Our master kit ships with an OEM grade 255 liter per hour inline pump. To ensure long life, these types of fuel pumps need to be gravity fed. This means the pump inlet needs to be at or below the bottom of the tank and as close to the tank as possible. It also needs to have a pre and post filter. Failure to follow some of these guidelines can cause premature wear and shortened life. A quick and easy test to make sure you got a good gravity feed is to quickly disconnect the fuel line inlet to the pump once the fuel system has been primed. The pump inlet hose should drain all the fuel from your tank if you let it. If the flow is obstructed or simply stops, you don't have a good gravity feed on your tank. This will make your pump work hard, have pressure drops, and ultimately void your pump's warranty when it quits. With that said, there are plenty of other options if you find your external fuel pump conditions unfavorable. There are OE style drop-in, in-tank retrofit, and fuel cell EFI fuel pump modules available to fit any style of fuel tank. Both external and in-tank fuel pumps are proven performers, with each having their own advantages. Use the solution that best fits your application. Since our Bronco already has an aftermarket fuel tank, we're gonna stick with the external pump included in the kit. We also like the fact that we can easily service it should the need arise. To mount the fuel pump and filters as low as possible, we fabricated a custom bracket that mounts behind our fuel tank. It sits down low, out of the way, and clears our differential. We made the fuel inlet as short as possible. We used the included pre and post filters along with the EFI rated hose clamps making sure to align the arrows as they show the direction of flow. When routing fuel line, steer clear of any high heat areas and take into account any moving parts. Make sure not to pinch the line or add any 90 degree fittings between the tank and pump as this can restrict the feed and result in problems. We use the dowel clamps to properly route and secure our fuel lines. Luckily our tank already has a return line inlet so we just connected our return line to our tank. If you're not so lucky, the best way to get a return line back into your tank is through the factory sending unit since these are removable and generally have ample room for an additional line. This way you don't mess with drilling a hole directly in your tank. Our master kit includes all the hardware necessary to install this easily. Be sure to install the fuel cuff in a manner that returns fuel below the fuel level. Don't just free dump it, as this aerates and foams up the fuel, causing cavitation and drivability issues. Now that we've run our supply and return lines, we mounted our fuel pressure regulator on the fender well. It's worth mentioning that if you don't have the room or don't want to run a return line all the way back to the tank, Holly has a great filter regulator combo that'll drastically reduce your return line. With a replaceable filter element and a fuel pressure regulator built in, there's no need to mount a regulator in your engine bay. Another option is this compact return style fuel pressure regulator that's designed to be mounted in line on the throttle body. Any one of these options will simplify your installation. Let's go ahead and finish plugging in all our connections. We ran our CAN bus connector through the firewall and connected our handheld touchscreen. 
We then plugged in our 7-pin harness and our 10-pin harness. And then the oxygen sensor. Now with everything connected, let's go ahead and connect our battery. With our installation done, we can now run through the calibration wizard. Before we begin, make sure you have the latest firmware updates on your Atomic 2. Let's go ahead and click on the wizards to begin our calibration. Select Atomic 2 for TBI type. We have an 8 cylinder engine. For engine displacement, we have a 347 cubic inch small block Ford. Click on Save, then Next. For target idle speed, we'll select 750. Hit Save, Next. For camp type, we're going to stick with stock mild, next. None for power adder. For our ignition type, we're using a CD box, which is our MSD, next. This is the name of our global configuration file. We'll hit start and it will transfer it to our Atomic 2 ECU. All that's left to do is cycle the ignition. Before we start our engine, we'll want to verify that all our sensors are operating properly. Let's go ahead and turn the ignition key to the run position. First thing we want to listen for is our fuel pump. It should prime for a few seconds. This is a good time to check for fuel leaks and confirm our fuel pressure. To check fuel pressure, click on monitor, multi-gauge, then sensors. As you can see, our fuel pressure is dropping since we just finished priming. We'll come back to this once our engine is running. Let's go back to the home screen. We're going to go to monitor, then we'll go to monitors. We're going to go to initial startup. On this screen, we can confirm all our sensors are operating properly. For engine RPM, we have stalled since the engine isn't running. TPS or throttle position sensor should be at zero. Go ahead and depress the gas pedal all the way down. Our TPS should read between 85 and 100%. If your reading is lower than 85%, you're not getting full travel from your throttle linkage. Make sure to correct this issue before proceeding. The MAP sensor should read between 95 and 102 kPa. Higher elevations may give readings as low as 75 kPa. The coolant temperature sensor should read the ambient temperature around your engine. We'll address the IAC when we bring our engine up to temp. Let's go ahead and start our engine. If your touchscreen reboots while cranking the engine over, you're going to have to find another switch 12 volt source that doesn't lose power while cranking. Let's confirm all our sensors are operating properly. We've got RPM signal and all our other sensors seem to be functioning correctly. We can now check our fuel pressure while the engine is running. Go to monitor, multi-gauge, then sensors. Our pressure is holding right about 60 PSI, which is perfect. Let's go back to our initial startup screen. Once the engine has built some heat, at least 160 degrees, we can go ahead and set the idle speed to the RPM we set in the handheld. With the Bronco in neutral and the parking brake set, adjust the idle speed screw closed or open until the IAC reads between 2 and 10%. If your TPS reading goes above 1%, once we set the IAC, we'll need to shut off the engine and this will reset our TPS to zero. You might have to adjust the secondary shaft screw if the primary throttle blades are fully closed and the idle speed is still high while the IAC reads zero. Turn the secondary shaft screw counterclockwise to close the throttle blades until your idle speed comes down. You can then use the actual idle speed screw to set your idle RPM. All that's left is to simply drive our Bronco and let the Atomic 2 self-tuning occur. Make sure to put the vehicle in various driving conditions, varying the engine speed and load. Performing routine driving will accomplish much of the learning process. Having all the benefits of VFI has never been easier. The throttle response is amazing, plus it runs cleaner in all types of elevation and weather conditions. After the engine has some drive time, minor tuning refinements can optimize fuel economy and power. For more information on MSD's Atomic 2, head on over to msdperformance.com.